five more minutes and I get to be Joseph. If you throw that, we are no longer co-dads. <laughs> you gonna pump fake that thing all night or you gonna take a shot, Brad? Huh? He's never played sports ever. What? What? Maybe it's stuck to his hand. Daddy's home too. More daddies, more problems. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Daddy's Homes 2. I really do appreciate it. But before I get into the review, help your boy out. Click that subscribe button. Become one of my subscribers. Go ahead and also click the bell so you can be notified when I make uploads. And give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. Now, we have Daddy's Homes 2. And I was really looking forward to this movie. Um, it seemed like it would be a lot of fun. Of course, I saw the first one uh, two years ago. Exactly around this time when it came out around Thanksgiving to Christmas time and for the most part i did enjoy that movie i thought it was pretty good pretty decent it was okay but it really got funny at the very end of the movie that's when things kind of picked up for me for the most part as far as the laughs were concerned they were kind of sprinkled out and you know here and there randomly here and there and uh disappointed at some points but for overall at the very end that's where all the laughs did come out and i was laughing my behind off now the difference between daddy's homes one and daddy's homes two is daddy's homes two is pretty much a better movie across the board it has better characters more character development it has a better story and it is also freaking hilarious i was laughing my butt off from beginning to literally the last frame of this movie and i think you will too and just really the premise of this movie is you probably know from the first one that you know the stepdad comes in and you know they have to get along between will ferrell's character and mark Wahlberg's character but it's kind of like the same thing here times two and of course that will be the case since it's times two but like the blended family element of this movie is like times four and not only you know are we getting more family we get the father of will ferrell which was being played by john lithgow and the father of mark Wahlberg's character who has been played by mel gibson and these two you know mark Wahlberg and um what is his name? Will Ferrell could not be any different. I mean, they're just con two completely different people come from two completely different walks of life. And that is the same case when it comes to Mel Gibson and John Lithgow. I mean, oh my goodness gracious. They're like on opposite ends of the universe with how their personality is. And that's just kind of one of the things that makes the movie, you know, seem so good. And, you know, when we're seeing the first one, you know, how different Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell are, you know, with this movie, you really do get to see how everyone involved is a product there of their environment, you know, with our fathers being John Lithgow and Mel Gibson, because Mel Gibson is like, you know, complete a-hole, just a hard ass tough all the time you know super duper masculine and john lithgow is like a soft fairy tale cuddly cotton candy teddy bear that is just so sensitive and you know we get to see you know why will ferrell is the way he is and between the characters the way they bounce off each other it just makes you laugh i mean it really does have a strong comedic element throughout this whole movie and that's just one of the things that makes it great Another thing that I just really liked about this movie is the story because every single is completely unpredictable. Every single like every time I was watching every time I was watching this movie, while I was watching this movie, at every moment I thought that I knew where the story was going to go. It completely did a left turn on me out of nowhere, ended up taking me to some place that I couldn't even imagine as as far as the story and the comedy is concerned. Because just like I mean, there are three key scenes in this movie that I just find hysterical. And that is the uh, it's not really a spoiler. I'm not going to ruin the movie for you. I'll just say that it has to do with the thermostat. It has to do with the Christmas tree and it has to do with the movie theater. Those were my three favorite scenes out of the whole movie. It was just, you know, completely hilarious, you know, and we have all these blended families. But in these moments, you know, that everyone is able. Oh, and uh, there's a nativity scene as well. That's funny, too. And all these 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 characters and family are just so different. But in these key scenes right here, you we they all come together and have a common ground. And even, you know, the, it's funny when they're clashing or whatever because of their different personalities, everybody in this giant blended family. But it's even funnier when they have a common ground. It's like, OK, I can relate to you this way. I can relate to you this way. And, you know, just et cetera. I mean, there there is a common denominator that all fathers, or all families, you know, want to hold on and 
And in these key scenes, it's like all over the place, you know, for good laughs, good entertainment, and it's just a lot of fun. And something else that I liked about the movie as well is the editing because you can write jokes and, you know, funny com comedic elements in a movie. But at the same time, if you do not edit the film the right way, the jokes just won't land the right punch. And there were, I don't want to ruin it for you here, but, you know, so they were just like, you know, giving regular lines of dialogue. And, you know, you may not know which characters are actually in the room at the time because the way that the camera is being shot and concentrated on two prominent figures or whatever. But when the camera breaks and it cuts over, you kind of see someone else in the room and they may not make sense right now, but I promise it will make sense once you see the movie. It's just hysterical. I mean, you can't help yourself but laugh. I was laughing throughout this whole movie it was just freaking hilarious and i loved it and i just really loved the character development as well because it really did we really did get to see where mark Wahlberg and um and will ferrell came from we really didn't get any flashback scenes with will ferrell's character but we did get a few with mark Wahlberg's, and it just kind of spoke volumes and it just makes sense i mean everybody has a valid reason to why they are upset or they're happy or they're feeling a certain way whether they're in their feelings or not and, you know, also this movie kind of just had a, a nice little message at the end, too. And some people don't like that because they feel that it can be preachy. And I don't mean it like that at all. But the thing that I got about it is, you know, a lot of people, for the most part, nobody likes to be alone on holidays. And, you know, if you are one of those people that likes to be alone during the holidays, that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But something that I took away from this movie is it's not exactly what you do and where you're doing it. But if you are with loving friends and family, all that matters is that you're together. It doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing. Just as long as you're together, you can make a, a nice little magical moment that can last for years and years and years and upon decades and decades. And that's kind of like the, the, the icing on the cake. Uh, the icing on the cake for this movie tied up in a nice red ribbon bow and you know it was just you know a beautiful picture to me and i just really loved it i mean like i recommend this this is something i didn't i wouldn't say that i would buy daddy Holmes one on blu-ray but daddy Holmes two if it comes out i don't want to just guarantee that i'm gonna buy it but you know, I mean, it is something that I wouldn't mind having in my collection because I really did enjoy the movie. It was very funny. I enjoyed it. It was, you know, high quality entertainment. If I had to rate Daddy's Home 2 out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it a 9 out of 10. Yes, a 9 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. Have you seen Daddy Songs 2 or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Become one of my subscribers so you can get all the content that I have to provide. Also, click the bell so you can be notified when I make uploads. You can go to my website right now. Check me out there. Bookmark it. I do have written views. Justmyopinion.net. Justmyopinion.net. And guys, you can also look me up on social media. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy for you guys by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. Oh, and I didn't even mention the director. The director, his name is uh, Sean Anders. Um, he did do Daddy's Homes 1. He also did Sex Drive. Uh, what else did he do? Sex Drive, Daddy's Home. Oh, that's my boy uh, with Adam Sandler as well. And, uh, you know, he did a great job. So I want to give credit there. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Daddy's Homes 2. More daddies, more problems. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.